Well, Matt Daniels revealed that he thought was thought before the season about taking you off the, the field goal block team, and you said, hey, I still got it, and uh, <laughs> evidently you do. So to take us through that story. Uh, yeah. Um, he didn't tell me that he thought about taking me off, so that's news to me. Um, <laughs> but um, always, you know, I, I love being involved in that team because special team shows, you know, that your team has attitude, your team has grit, because those moments of the games, you know, some teams take those parts of the game very lightly, and those, those, you know, that part of the game could be a change game and uh, a game changing play. And um, unfortunately, it wasn't for us at that time, but I can see, you know, us foreseeing, you know, us flipping the tide next time that does happen. But I got a great get off um, off the edge, man, Josh. Uh, we, we applied a lot of pressure early on on the left side, and we decided to flip it on that play. And, um, and I got it, got it right at the fifth step. Um, it was, a, like I said, a good jump off the ball. Got almost, almost my whole forearm on it uh, to get the block. So, yeah, the old guy still got it. How do you avoid, like, <laughs> after you had gotten the offsides penalty, like, still being aggressive and not holding back too much? Yeah, um, like I said on my podcast, I won't give away too much of my secrets, but um, that was just a gauging, a gauging, a gauging down for me. So just to see what I can get away with. And I always try to do them on extra points to where it really doesn't hurt us mentioned you used your inside hand as opposed to your outside hand. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? Because you said most people kind of swim. Yeah, uh, because I got such of a uh, such good of a jump to where in the way my body was, it, it would have been hard for me to get my right arm back across. So that would have been a waste of movement. But the way I got around the corner, the tackle didn't nudge me or anything because I was expecting him to so I can shave the corner. And typically when I shave the corner, I'm already this way. And I had a good gauge at the kicker and he had not even, you know, he was in the rhythm to kick the ball, but he was nowhere near the ball just of just, um, um, yet. And that's when I decided just to go with my inside arm because I felt that the way my body was, it was easier for me to get the block that way. From a three to five point. Even a six step and you don't have a chance no, to block it? Chance. It has to be five or less, yep. From a coverage standpoint, is it as simple as just executing better, or are there kind of some schematic or various changes you can make from watching the, the film of that game? Yeah, just executing better, you know, on, on all phases. You know, as uh, Coach Ed speaks on this defense being a, a marriage of, you know, rushing coverage, you know, working together, you know, so that means, you know, guys, you know, st uh, keeping their rush integrity, you know, guys plastering coverage, being where they're supposed to be at the time that, you know, that defense calls them to be in that certain responsibility. So it's just all guys being on the same page, you know, at all times. And, you know, and of course, yeah, you want to be, you don't want to have coverage uh, mishaps in the back end, you know, because those always lead to big plays. So, you know, if we can, you know, eliminate those and be on the same page at all times, you know, we can have a better outcome. Is that, is that just communication and, and maybe familiarity with the scheme? That making sure those busts don't happen on the back end? Yeah, just communication and, like I said, just making sure everyone sees it the same. You know, that's the biggest thing. You know, just making sure everybody's on the same page because, you know, um, you know, things like that, you know, can happen throughout the course of a game. But, you know, if you're watching film together and picking each other's brains and making sure that, you know, you go over these certain looks in practice to where, you know, things like that, you know, don't show up. So we have to make sure that, you know, we continue to go through the unscouted looks, things that we may not see in the game, you know, things that may have hurt us um, up until this point, and continue working on them so they don't show up again. What happened at, at LSU that made uh, them sort of turn the corner on receivers and start producing the type of receivers that they have um, in the past you know, five, six, seven years? I mean, quite honestly, to be quite honest with you, um, they always had receivers there. I mean, we always had athletes across the board, you know, just, you know, couldn't find, I don't know if it's, because I always thought we had quarterbacks that can throw the ball as well. I don't know if it was the offensive coordinator or the play caller, a trust factor. You know, I couldn't tell you what it was, but we always had great athletes around the board. It's just a matter of time of getting the right quarterback in there to get, the, get those guys the ball. And you saw when you got Joe in there, you know, the, 
you know, the, 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 now they turn into receiver you at yeah. some point. You know what I mean? So um, it's just all about the quarterback and the play caller. You know, af getting being able to get athletes there at LSU should never be a problem. Did they ever have conversations with you about playing receiver there? When I was in school? Yeah. You know, Les Miles flirted with it a little bit. Um, still wish I had the opportunity to get a couple of offensive snaps, but he waited to my junior year to at least give me a punt return snap. Um, and the rest was history after that, but I begged him, you know, since my freshman year, but we, to his offense, we did have Trenton Holiday, yeah. one of the fastest guys yeah. in college football history. So I guess I had to wait my turn. I wonder, I wonder just the way schemes have changed if now, if you went there as a true freshman, if there would even be a question. What you yeah, I, I, I think for sure, I'd probably be on the opposite side of the ball, um, especially with the, what I was able to do in high school. I was, I think I scored like 21 times on the offensive side of the ball, five times on defense and, a bunch of times on returns. <laughs> Patrick, what stands out about St. Brown and just the way that he finds success? His toughness. Uh, I think he's a very, very tough, gritty guy um, that loves the game, that plays with a ton of passion each and every time you see him pop up on film. You know, he's a guy that he takes on that dirty laundry for that team as far as in the run blocks. You know, he's, a, he's not the biggest receiver that they have on their roster, but he's the guy that's in there you know, insert blocking, you know, cutting down the ends, plunge motioning, uh, plunge, giving us a little plunge, plunge action, trying to cut, cut, uh, cut out that backside C um, defender. I'm sorry, a backside six defender. Um, so, you know, he's a guy that, that kind of does it all for him and it kind of makes that offense go, you know. So we have to understand where he is, understand what he means to their offensive scheme and just try our best to, you know, eliminate those big plays that, we, we, we've been accustomed to seeing for the last six games. Pat Pete, how tough was it missing that game at Detroit last December? Speaking of St. Brown, he scores the winning touchdown. Yeah. Maybe you could have done something different <laughs> if you'd been on the field and stopped it, but how tough was that for you? That one was very tough. Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday um, on my couch watching, watching it, watch Cam get his first pick in that game um, with, with a great steal. I think he, he tried to throw it to the tight end or something like that. but. To watch the ending of that game was, uh, was just heartbreaking. <laughs> it was heartbreaking to watch it, but um, I believe he had a good game in that game as well. If I can't remember his stats, but you know, I can just remember him having reverses and, like you said, making that game win a touchdown. Um, but you know, we also understand that this this Detroit Lions team is uh, playing with a lot of fire. You know, they're playing with a different. Um, edge to them, you know, so this is a very, very dangerous football team that, you know, we or anybody can overlook. So we understand that we have our hands full and we understand that it's going to take, you know, extreme focus um, each and every down to uh, to try to win this game. Pat, how have you seen Caleb kind of progress from where he was in the spring to, to where he is now and how he's handled getting the opportunity to have some reps in, in the first couple of games? Yeah, the, uh, Caleb is coming along just fine, you know. Um, Having an have opportunity to sit back and kind of see how uh, the day-to-day -day goes, have an opportunity to play in those early preseason games, to get a little game feel, understand how, how important communicate, uh, communicating to one another on the field in the heat of, uh, in the, heat of the battle, you know, understanding you know, how important studying is, how important understanding not only what you need to do, but your opponent. You know, because, you know, like I told him, you know, last week, he, he probably didn't think he was going to play, but I always tell him each and every Wednesday, be ready, because you never know. You just never know um, when your opportunity is going to come. But he's, he's been handling it, uh, handling it very, very well. Um, I'm extremely proud of him. And, you know, now we know, you know, we won't be missing a beat or be a drop off when his number is called. Messages do, do players take from coaches after losses? I guess how much of the way you guys respond to losses or feel about how things went is based off of the things you hear about it from the coach? Right after the game? Yeah, or even in the day or two afterwards. Well, you know, obviously, coach is always going to be, you know, honest with his players and, you know, want the best out of us, you know, each and every time we step out on the football field. And just to a man, that just wasn't our best effort. And we, we all understand that. And we all understand that that can't happen again in order for us to be the team that we want to be at the end, at the end of the year. You know, so coach, coach mes message was just 
clear. You know, just come back this week. Yeah, we got punched in the mouth, but now we just have to come back. It's our first taste of, uh, of adversity. Now we have an opportunity to see how we're going to bounce back. You know, now this, you know, now we get an opportunity to see, you know, the real character of this football team. And I don't doubt the character that we have in this football team for real. Do players need the, I guess, the, the kick in the rear end kind of response, or is it kind of one of those things where you guys all know already? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, obviously I know that we're grown men, but at the same time, at some point, you know, obviously it's still early on in the season and we don't want it to happen again. So, yeah, kicking in the butt is always appreciated, you know, because if we want to be as good as we want to be, that just cannot happen. And that can't be something we sweep under the rug. Pete, you mentioned your fourth career block field goal, sparing me extensive Google searches. You got uh, a couple, one or two that I can look up that you recall? Yeah, I got, uh, two, I got San Francisco, Seattle, my rookie year. Just got this one. And the fourth one was against, I want to say, it probably was the Rams, if I'm not mistaken, at their new stadium. Uh, not the new stadium, at the uh, when it was in... Um, no, uh, Coliseum in 18, 18 or 19. Yep, I can show you the video. <laughs> Bring it out. Yeah, you know, because, you know, like Google and Wikipedia, you know, like people put that in. So yeah, I, I'll find it for you. I got you, Chris. <laughs> you want to add it to your bio? I got you. I, I can add it? You, oh, anybody can go in. Okay. I may have to add that then. Last couple? <laughs> That's it? I got it.